It's really hard sometimes to come to church and to sing to God be the glory, to sing about the goodness of God when it seems like our world is falling apart. We know it's easier for him or her who seems to have everything all together. Their life is good from the upswing. But for those of us who are dying on the inside, sometimes, Lord, the words just don't count. And so, Father, it's my prayer today. For those of us who are here and are really struggling today, that we might find some relief in your word and in the fellowship of other Christians. And for those of us who are rejoicing today, Father, I pray that we will recognize that that rejoicing is because you have done something wonderful in our life. Then, Father, for those of us who have been praying, and praying, and praying, and praying, and praying, a year, a decade, two decades, maybe longer, and there's still no answer. I pray, Father, today that we will have faith and trust. Lord, Christianity isn't always easy. And some of us today really are struggling with life issues. We have parents who are sick, children who are struggling, a nation that's being pulled apart. And Father, we struggle. Lord, I believe that the church is entering into a period of real struggle. And I would hope, Father, today as we look at this one verse, that, Father, you would open our hearts and open our minds to quite possibly what's ahead for the Christian church and our nation. And Father, I believe if our nation continues to turn against you, to turn against the church, then all we're going to have is our relationship with you and our relationship with one another. And so, Father, today, I pray that your spirit would do a special work in our church and that as Christians, we might truly begin to get to know each other to help one another, love one another, care for one another, bear one another's burdens as we open our Bible. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Now, Lord, I'm going to ask that you open our hearts and open our minds as we open our Bible. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do want to invite you to continue with us in our study, Walking with Jesus. We're going to talk today about Christianity in the present tense. And our text today is 1 John chapter 3, verse 13. Richard Wormron, who is the founder of the Voice of the Martyrs, the organization uh, that we are working with in the back back there, says that uh, he saw Christians... And here's a quote. I have seen Christians in communist prisons with 50 pounds of chains on their feet, tortured with red hot iron pokers, in whose throats spoonfuls of salt had been forced, then sent back to their cell, cold starving, and without water. Isn't it hard to believe that one human being, 
could hate another human being with that amount of hatred. How could one person do that to another person? And the reason they do it is because of Jesus Christ. John, writing first John, is the apostle of love. And as the apostle of love, his brother James was killed for speaking the truth about Jesus. His fishing partner, Peter, was killed for speaking the truth about Jesus. His friend, Paul, who joined them later, was killed for speaking the truth about Jesus. I imagine that as John is thinking about this verse today, his mind went back to a time when he was an eyewitness to the darkest time in human history. A time when hatred was on display like never before. Let me read to you just a few comments about that Thursday evening. Now was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with their insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. So we have a murderer. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas, the murderer, instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked? Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted aloud, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over. To be crucified. I'm going to talk to you today about Christianity in the present tense. One verse we're going to look at, 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, a verse about hatred. But before we do that, let me remind you the purposes of 1 John. John wants you and me as Christians, we Christians, to walk in joyous partnership with God and each other. He wants us to walk in forgiveness. And he wants us to walk with discernment concerning false teachers. He wants us to walk with confidence as we approach the judgment seat of Christ. He wants us to walk with honor. We are Christians and we're not ashamed that we're Christians. He wants us to walk with knowledge. Jesus came to get rid of our sins. He wants us to walk with victory. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and he wants us to walk with love. As a matter of fact, 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 says, This is the message you heard from the beginning, that in order that, for the purpose that, we should love one another. Now, 1 John is a book about contrasts. Now, I want to share a couple of the contrasts with you. He talks to us about light and darkness. He talks to us about truth and falsehood. He talks to us about right and wrong. He talks to us about being a child of God and a child of Satan. And he talks to us about love, and he talks to us about hate. Now our present contrast, you begin in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. Listen to this. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. This is the message you heard from the beginning, that in order that for the purpose that we should love one another. Don't be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. 
And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. So the present contrast is that you, you as a Christian, are to love one another. Now we looked at that three weeks ago. You and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, we are Christians and we are to love one another. And our love is a present tense love, an act of love. I am the present tense. I am to love you. You are to love me. Now, if you look at what we looked at last week, he said, do not be like Cain. So he's giving us the opposite. You love one another. Cain didn't love. Cain hated his brother. As a matter of fact, Cain murdered his brother. And then if you look at verse 13, he says, do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. So let me tell you what I did in my Bible. You don't have to, but it helps me. I circled the word you in verse 11. You, as a Christian, are to love one another. And then I circled the word you in verse 13. Because the world says, the Bible says the world's going to hate you. So now that I have, is something quite interesting. I am to love you, you are to love me, but the world is going to hate us. So let's think about Christianity in the present tense. Lottie Moon was a missionary to China. And in China, if you were a young girl and you got married, you were expected as a new bride to worship your husband's ancestors. So you went to the tomb and you worshiped your husband's ancestors. Would a Christian do that? No. So Lottie Moon tells the story of a young bride who said to her mother-in-law, I cannot worship my husband's dead ancestors. The mother-in-law, remember mother-in-law, verbally attacked the daughter-in-law, physically attacked the daughter-in-law, and killed the daughter-in-law. Why? Because of Jesus. Lee Quinn heard Christians singing. He was drawn to Christians in China singing. He went to the service, became a Christian, stood up, and said, I want to be a follower of Jesus. Lottie Moon gave him a New Testament. He took that New Testament home. His sons, his sons spit on him, beat him, and locked him in a storage container. Why? Because of Jesus. We're talking today about present tense Christianity. Look at verse 13. Do not be surprised, my brother. If the world hates you. Now we know that love in verse 11 is in the present tense. We know that. But verse 13, don't be surprised, that's also in the present tense. And hates is in the present tense. So I'm a Christian. And I am told in the present tense to love you, and you are to love me. But John says, don't be surprised, don't marvel, don't wonder in the present tense if the world hates you. May I tell you, I have been rather surprised at how our nation 
is turning against conservative Christianity. I've been surprised at some of the things that have been said and done against the body of Christ. That surprise has caused me to study the Bible. Psalms 119, 71 says, It is good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decree. So as I have seen our culture turn against Christianity, it's driven me to do what David said, study the Bible. So in my study of the Bible, I read, do not be surprised, don't wonder, don't marvel, my brothers, Christians, right, my brothers, if the world hates you. So let's remember what John has told us about the world over in 1 John chapter 2, 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This verse 15 is in the present tense. So what I have now is, I am to love you, you are to love me in the present tense. In the present tense, we are not to love the world system, because the world system, according to 1 John 3.13, hates us. Now Jesus talked about hatred as well in John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, again, in the present tense, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. So again, hate is in the present tense. So what I've discovered now in the study of the Bible, because of affliction, is this. I am to love you, you are to love me. We are not to love the world system that opposes God, opposes God's Son, opposes God's people who obey His Word. And we're not to love the world system because the world system hates us. We love, we don't love the world system because the world system hates us. So I want you to think about this. John is writing about hatred. And John is just writing what Jesus said in John 15. But think of John 15. It's Thursday night. John, Jesus, and the other disciples had gone to Jerusalem for a celebration. The celebration of the Passover. A wonderful time. A great time. And Jesus has this time with his disciples where he washes their feet. And then he announces, one of you is going to betray me. And later that night after dinner, Judas gets up and he walks away. And after Judas is gone, do you remember what Jesus said? A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By all, this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus is saying, on this darkest night of human history, on this night when hatred is going to be poured out, he says, love one another. A few minutes later, Jesus says to them, I'm going to ask the Father, and he's going to give you another counselor and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and he'll be in you. He's saying, I want you to love one another. And I want you to live by the truth. Then the Bible says after John 14, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go. And where did they go? They got up. They walked through Jerusalem. They head to the Garden of Gethsemane. And what happened? Jesus was arrested. Jesus is trying. Jesus is beaten. And Jesus is crucified. So on the darkest night of human history, 
when hate is being poured out like no other time, Jesus is saying, I want you to love one another. And I want you to live, live by the truth. Why is this happening? Well, do you remember what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 19? If you belong to the world, that world system, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. You and I are different. We don't belong to the world system. We belong to another kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God. So let's take our Bible, go back to 1 John, and let me ask you this question. Why is there this present tense hatred for Christians? When you look at the life of Abel that we looked at last week, was Abel a wicked person? Look at what the Bible says. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one, and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. John says Abel was righteous. The writer in Hebrews said, By faith, Abel offered, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. Abel wasn't wicked. Abel was righteous. What did Moses say about him? Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he didn't look with favor. So Cain was angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? What's he saying? Look, your brother did what was right. I accepted him. Just do what's right. Abel wasn't wicked. He was righteous. But he was murdered. Was Jesus wicked? Well, what does the Bible say about Jesus? First John chapter 3, verse 5. In him is no sin. No sin in Jesus. First John chapter 3, verse 7. He's righteous. So you have righteous Abel, righteous Jesus, and yet the world system turned against us. Why is there present tense hatred for Christians from the world system? Well, if you were to take your Bibles and go to John 3.16, here's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. See, the Bible says we all have a choice. And that choice hinges on Jesus, right? The whole, the whole choice hinges on Jesus. Do I believe and receive Jesus, or do I reject Jesus? Everything, everything hinges on Jesus. Jesus. Verse 19. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says that God sent his son, Jesus. Everything hinges on Jesus. Do we believe and receive, or do we reject? If we believe and receive Jesus, then we're responding to God's love. For God so loved the world, we respond when we say yes to God's love. We respond to God's light. This is the perfect light that's come to the world. We accept the truth, but whoever lives by the truth, and then the Bible says, that person is transformed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen, seen plainly that what is done has been done for God. So the Bible says everybody has a choice, and the choice hinges on Jesus. Jesus 
is presented to, by God for God so loved the world, and you have a choice. Do I accept the love of God? Do I respond to the light of God? Do I obey the truth of God? And do I become a transformed person? Or, the opposite is, do I reject the love of God? For God so loved the world, I reject the love of God. Well, the Bible says those who reject the love of God love darkness rather than light. The Bible says those who love darkness rather than light, their deeds are evil. And they hate. So there's your two choices. Do I receive the love of God, follow the light, experience the truth, and be transformed? Or do I reject the love because I love darkness? Instead, I do evil deeds and I hate. You see, the Bible says that Christians are different people. We've been chosen out of this world. We belong to a different kingdom. Because we have said yes to the love of God, yes to the light of God, yes to the truth of God, and God has transformed us. One of the best pictures of this is a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Who is Saul against? Christian, the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, the way of Jesus, he's against Christians, whether men or women. He might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was rejecting the love, rejected the light, hated Christians, went after Christians. Why? Because Christians represented Jesus. Everything hinges on Jesus. But then he responded to the light. He responded to the love. He responded to the truth. And he became a totally transformed man from Saul of Tarsus. To the Apostle Paul. Now, as we're getting ready to close this morning, I need to tell you, to remind you, that there are two families. Here's what the Bible says in 1 John 3.10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Present tense Christianity. Two families. One family, the family of God, loves one another and does what is right. The other family is the family of the devil. Those who reject the love of God, reject the light of God, reject the truth of God, do their evil deeds and hate. Two families. Matthew makes this very clear. Matthew chapter 10, Jesus is sending out his disciples. He's sending out his disciples to the lost house of Israel. Listen to what he says. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Listen to the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. In other words, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Christ, follow me. The other part of the message is free health care. Got it? Heal the sick, Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. What's bad about that? What's bad about that? What's bad about that? Free health care. I'm going to send you out, heal the sick, good, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out the demons, and it's all free. 
nothing bad about that. It's good. Plus, the kingdom of heaven is near. What is the response? What's the response to this? Well, verse 17. Be in your guard against men. They're going to hand you over to the local councils, flog you in their synagogues on my account. You see, Jesus is the name. On my account, you'll be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. They're going to arrest you, Jesus said. Verse 21. Brother will betray brother to death. A father is child. Children will bow against their parents. Have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. And what was the terrible message? The kingdom of heaven is near, free health care. And yet, they hated Jesus and the disciples for that. Go to Matthew 10, 34, here's what Jesus said. Don't suppose that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. You remember who was persecuting Lee Quinn? Jesus said, a man against his father. It was his son who beat him, who spit on him, and who locked them in a storage container. Why? Because of Jesus. Do you remember who killed the young Chinese bride? Her mother-in-law. I have come to turn a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So let me ask you a question. Do we connect this? Are you presently actively loving? Are you? Because the Bible says that's what we're to do. Are you presently surprised, wondering by the world's hate? I've been caught off guard, quite frankly, by the hatred, the virulence against churches. But I understand now why. Because I was driven to the Bible. Are you presently being hated? It might be that you're in a school or a work environment and you're standing for Christ. And you're being hated for that. If so, why don't you share that with us and allow us to pray for you and encourage you and help you. I'm wondering if you will write a letter to a persecuted Christian. Today is the last day for them. I'm wondering if you'll give $30 for an action pack. Today is the last day. And I'm wondering if you'll support the shoebox ministry. 780 shoeboxes times $9, cost $9 to send a shoebox, is $7,020. I'm wondering if you'll help us stop by the store. Here are our choices. Where are you going to spend your eternal days? The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gives authority to become a child of God. I'm asking if you're a member of God's family today. Are you certain you're a member of God's family? And are you a member of God's family because you're a good person? You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Cain thought that because of his good deeds, God would accept him. But last week we learned in Genesis 3, 21 and 4, 3, that God said his good deeds were evil. So you aren't a member of God's family if you think you are simply because you're good. And I'm wondering, if you're a member of God's family, are you standing on the side of truth? That day that Jesus was being hated, in a conversation with Pontius Pilate. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were my servants, would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king, then said Pilate. 
Jesus answered, you're right, I'm, I came. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. You know what's going to cause you and me to have our family and our friends, our world turn against us? It's standing for truth. So I'm asking you, it's easy to stand for truth here, but in your home, in your work, outside, are you standing for truth? And a Christian is somebody who does what is right. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. So ask yourself, am I a member of the family of God? Not because I'm good, but because I have suggested the love of God, experienced the life of God, am obeying and standing for the truth of God, and I have become a transformed person, doing what is right according to the Bible. And if you're not a Christian, then I would encourage you today to come at the invitation and say, Pastor, I don't think I'm a Christian. And if you are a Christian, then I'm going to ask you, if you walk out of this building today, how are you going to live the rest of your day? Because John says that a Christian is somebody who has the hope of heaven, and therefore they are on a moment-by-moment -moment basis purifying themselves. A Christian is somebody who is abiding in Christ. A Christian is somebody who is practicing that which is right. And a Christian is somebody who is loving in present time. Father, thank you for the day that you've given us. I've struggled, I've wondered at the hatred shown towards Christians. I grew up in a time when Christians were accepted, churches were accepted, truth was accepted. And Father, as I see a change in culture, I've struggled to understand why those of us with love, with light, and with truth would be the targets of hatred. But now I understand it. And so I thank you for your word because your affliction has driven me to your word. I'm so thankful for the practicality of your word. And now, Father, it might be that somebody here is believing, understanding, that maybe they made a profession of faith, they've been baptized, they're a member of the church, but they don't think they're a Christian. I would pray, Father, that today they would settle that issue by coming. For the rest of us who are Christians, we have to remember that you've told us that we're different. So that means we have the hope of heaven and we're purifying ourselves. We're walking in forgiveness. It means that we love one another in the present tense. It means that we're doing what's right according to your standard of right. So, Father, as we get ready to stand and as we get ready to sing, I'm asking you, Father, to draw us to yourself, to make those decisions so that this is a transformative day for individuals and for our church collectively. In Jesus' name, Amen. And just stand. I need thee every hour, but sing it. Let's count. I need